Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Delise. I am a full-time working mom of three, and on this channel, I kind of just try to do lifestyle videos that includes anything mom-related, anything teacher-related. I'm a first grade teacher, I forgot to mention that, and just life, you know, I'm, we're all kind of just trying to get through this thing called life. So I hope you'll stick around and hit that subscribe button down below. Um, before I get into this video, I want to preface this by saying that I wanted to for the entire week, like get, you know, decent looking and make this video when there was natural light and yeah, that just didn't happen because like I said, I'm a working mom. Um, so I like, you know, straightened my hair and had all of the plans <laughs> in the world to film this during the day. Well, it's impossible to film it if the kids are home because I would say it's just the three-year-old, but it's not. It's all three kids. Um, they always have something to tell me as soon as I'm doing something. If I am not busy, nothing. But as soon as I'm busy, they need me. So <laughs> that was just not possible at that point. And then, um, I had planned to do it one evening. Um, Kaylee's had dance class, so my husband usually takes them, takes her to dance class and takes the boys because I am teaching in the evenings and I'll get more into that in a little bit. And um, we end, she ended off not being able to go. So they were home, so I couldn't film it that day. Anyways, this is not what this video is about. So I wanted to do a quick video, just kind of like a life update. So I wanted to talk about where I've been because hello it's been forever since I've sat down in front of a camera and just talked to you guys and then also um, what my plans are for 2020 okay. so 2020 I feel like 2020 was just the year of it was just an interesting year for everyone um, the year started out great but of course you know march came along and everybody went into quarantine and i was thrown into teaching from home kindergarten <laughs> all day while having three kids home uh two of which were also doing school from home um to be honest not horrible um my kids are very independent when it comes to school so it wasn't a big deal my husband was also home uh, he actually hit, ended up having to take a medical leave from work, um, so no biggie. He kept Vincent anytime that I had live lessons with my students via Google Meet or Zoom or whatever, and um, just, you know, we made it work. Um, the summer came, of course, everything just kind of feels... Like it was all jumbled up in one because we were still in quarantine and we quarantined. Um, we did not travel, which is new for us. We always travel to at least New Jersey um, to see our family. We did not travel. We did not do any summery things. Um, we did go camping. I'll insert some pictures here. We went camping in a yurt at a state park. It was just, it felt safe and it was safe. Um, we cleaned it when we got there and yeah, it was great. We did some hiking, um, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. But that's basically <laughs> the only like adventure we went on this entire year, the entire year of 2020. Um, come August, well actually, come July, end of July, we had a leak. Um, our dishwasher had a leak. We ended up having to get a new dishwasher and then um, as a result of the leak, it actually went under the floorboards in our dining room. We ended off um, needing to replace our dining room floors. Well, we decided, well, we needed to replace all the flooring. So um, we were going to go with a company, um, but changed our mind literally last minute, like the day before they were supposed to come out and set it up. And I felt so guilty about it, but it just... Um, Financially was going to be better for us to do it on our own Which I'm actually glad we went with that choice. So we went ahead and did that um, We started replacing the floors we let you know 
let it dry out we took everything out we started replacing the floors um, and then when we got to the living room we found some wet moldy looking floor I'm calling it mold I don't know exactly what it was um, we called a plumber in because it was the wall that backs like directly up to the bathroom the kids bathroom so I thought okay there has to be a leak like in the sink or something because of the toilet that's the wall that would be sharing um, well there wasn't it turns out um, we actually had a leak we had a leak under um, the sub flooring like something we would have never been able to see um, so at that point you know you have to get home insurance involved we did that Store, long story short very long story short I did mention this was in July we got insurance involved and the insurance company was great however unfortunately um, the job is still not done <laughs> yep January 2021 it is not done and um, that is just an issue with the company that we hired and um, some of the subcontractors that they hired um, thankfully when this all happened um, they actually had to rip up both bathroom floors because they had to replace subfloor in both bathrooms so um, thankfully my brother-in-law lives literally around the block <laughs> um, and he's a bachelor so he's single he lives in a three-bedroom house he was able to let us stay with him we stood with him for three months until we were finally able to move back into our house because we finally got um, one working bathroom and that was the kids bathroom because that was the one that le needed the least amount of work our bathroom actually was a complete gut job so um, up until about two weeks ago we couldn't use our bathroom either um, actually last week is the first time that we were able to use our new shower I am super excited to show you guys what those things look like but of course I want to wait till they're hundred percent done there was quite a few issues we had to do a walkthrough um, so I'm still waiting on those things to be done but I'm practicing patience um, although I feel like I've been very patient I have had to go through the Better Business Bureau but it is what it is right guys that's 2020 for you that's what 2020 was um, it was a mess I stressed so much about just the whole situation with not being at home especially because that situation happened literally right when the school year started and you know, I was back to work um, and to begin the school year our county was fully virtual and that was great uh, the plan was still that I was gonna be teaching kindergarten um, I am a kindergarten teacher um, usually I was gonna be teaching kindergarten in my home school things were gonna be great um, my both of my older kids they're the school-age kids they're well Kaylee's will be 13 in two days so she may be 13 by the time this video goes up um, I have a 13 year old and an almost 12 year old um, they both be in middle school um, the school that I chose for my children is actually a program where it's they go to the school building two days a week three days of the week they are on their own on the computer anyways this is before coronavirus or anything like that so they were prepared for that so everything was going fine and I was just trying to figure out how I was going to teach at home from my brother-in-law's house um, with three kids my husband at this point is back to work during the day because um, if you're new to my channel and you don't know this he actually has worked the night shift um, basically since my three-year-old was born there was a small stint in time that he worked during the day um, and we had actually our neighbors our neighbor um, she watched the baby for us while we were both at work um, but other than that he has worked the night shift so he could be home with the baby this was just what worked best for us we tried to put the baby in daycare and that lasted all of two weeks it was just not not for us um, my older kids did not go to daycare I was previously a stay-at-home mom for over eight years so yes anyways <laughs> getting back to my spiel about 2020 so I was just trying to navigate how I was gonna make this happen and then my county made this huge announcement 
like huge like people still like they're like what <laughs> um my county decided that because we were going to be virtual for the full for the beginning of the year for the foreseeable future we were not sure when schools would be opening back up um that we would have something called an evening academy and this would be for elementary school students only um, middle school and high school they're kind of on their own um, they've just got to figure out how to do their work during the day but it was meant to help parents who are working during the day to be able to um, just navigate this virtual learning so that they could be there for their children so um, you know, we heard about it, didn't hear much else about it, and then my principal came to my team, my kindergarten team, and told us that because of the numbers in our school for my grade level, one of the kindergarten teachers was going to have to go to, to you know, move over as an evening academy teacher. And this was meant to be temporary, it was meant to only be um, until schools opened back up. So she obviously, my principal's amazing. <laughs> she gave us the opportunity to decide if we wanted to. And then she said if nobody could, you know, volunteer for the cause that she would just pick somebody to do it. And at first I was just like, oh, it absolutely cannot be me. You know, how could I do that? I have three kids. And then I got to thinking a little bit and kind of figured out that it would be 100% the best bet for me. So I talked it over with her and just ended up being, um, it was like a mutual agreement that it was best for me um, because I could then focus on the kids during the day and I would start technically my work day starts at 1.30 p.m. I would start working just a little bit before my husband got home and then I'm not teaching live lessons with students until four, which is way after he's home from work. As long as my husband was able to handle the kid, kids in the evening, you know, and we were able to work out that his schedule worked out with everything else, um, Evening Academy was perfect for me. So that is what I'm doing. So that is why when I started this video, I said I'm a first grade teacher because I learned a few days later that I would not be teaching kindergarten which is what I have taught for the past three years and that instead I would be teaching first grade fully new curriculum that I did not have to hold and read through or anything I had to get access to it digitally but if anything I was up for the challenge I taught first grade for my student teaching so I knew a, like a little bit of the standards so I was you know, I was up for the challenge. So that's what where we are now. I am teaching first grade in the evenings. Like I said, I have, my live lessons don't start till 4 p.m. We end at 7 p.m. Um, I start working at 1.30 and it has worked perfectly. It has allowed me to kind of get the best of both worlds because I have been able to spend the days with Vincent, my three-year-old, um, that I wasn't able to do before and going from being a stay-at-home mom to my two oldest kids to being a working mom while Vincent was younger it was was really hard on me it was really really hard on me so having this opportunity to be able to be home with him this year has been amazing like amazing I have the best of both words worlds I'm able to teach which is my passion is my love and I'm able to be a mom, which is 100%, if I could say anything, um, it's everything I've ever wanted. So it's just been beautiful. It's also allowed me the chance to be able to finally get my bariatric surgery. So I made a video maybe closer to two years ago talking about how I was going to get bariatric surgery. Long story short, had an issue with my first surgeon, got a new surgeon, COVID hit, wasn't able to get surgery until October of 2020. So October 27th, 26th, ooh, I can't remember guys, um, of 2020, I had my surgery. I am down about 50 pounds since the last, since surgery day. Um, well, yeah. 
that was the last time I weighed myself. I was about 50 pounds down. I have, I'm feeling great. I'm doing great. Surgery wasn't 100% easy. <laughs> the recovery was a little difficult on me. Um, I took three weeks off of work, um, but it was a little difficult. It was hard not to be able to do things, but everything went great. I'm doing great. I feel like a new person, um, to be honest. And I still have a ways to go guys. I'm still overweight. I am not saying I'm skinny now. It's not magic process. It's, it is a tool. It is something you have to use correctly and it's a lot of work. Um, but I'm so glad that I was able to get that surgery and that working the evening academy afforded me the ability to take those three weeks off because in September, my district actually opened up for face-to-face -face learning and luckily um, still gave students the choice. So Evening Academy was still stood open. So I didn't end up having to go back to the building, which would have definitely held my surgery back quite a bit. What else happened? <laughs> Just so many things. 2020 was a year. If there is one thing that I have learned from 2020, it is that I need to be more appreciative of what I have. Um, the people I have around me, the house I live in, the things that I am able to provide for my family, I need to be thankful for. And I am 100% thankful for all of those things. Oh, there's a really big thing that I almost forgot to tell you guys about. Something super exciting. And that is that I got my master's degree. <laughs> I know, in the chaos of this all, I somehow decided um, to go back to school and get a master's degree, and I went right through the same college that I got my bachelor's degree, which was Western Governors University, and I got a master's in arts in English language learning. It is something that I am passionate about. I love to help students learn the language. I had a student my first year teaching who came straight from Mexico. She knew not one thing in English except for the word yes and no. And um, she was, by the grace of God, placed in my classroom because she showed me where my heart is in teaching. And she, by the end of the school year, was reading in English with comprehension at a higher reading level than some of my native English speaking students. She was speaking English perfectly. She was the bomb, <laughs> like seriously. And um, being able to advocate for her and help her learn the language really, really opened up a passion in me in teaching. So I got my master's degree in English language learning. No plans to change what I'm doing right now. I do 100% plan to stay in the classroom for the foreseeable future. Um, but eventually I'd love to use that degree and, you know, find a job in the ESOL department um, and just continue to help students learn the language. So with that being said, that was our 2020. <laughs> it was a crazy wild roller coaster of a ride with lots of highs and many lows as it was for, I'm sure, most of everyone. 